In this video, we're going to talk about proof-of-work consensus and how proof-of-work consensus is used to create an immutable chain of block data on the blockchain. Let's take a small example. Let's say we have some block data and in the interest of simplicity, we'll keep this very, very short. But understand that in real life, a block will most likely contain many more than just three transactions. But on this block, we have a full block consisting of three transactions. When it's time to validate a full block, all nodes on the network will start to guess a nonce value. What we're looking for is a nonce value such that when we take our input trans transaction data and we combine it with the nonce value, we get a hash output that matches the difficulty. In this case, the difficulty is a hash output that begins with four leading zeros. Every node on the network will guess a different nonce randomly until they happen to find one that matches the difficulty. So our node may start off by guessing one, two, three, and we see that that does not produce a hash output that matches the difficulty of four leading zeros. Let's try again. Let's try nine, seven, three, three, two, one. Once again, that does not give us a hash output that matches the desired difficulty. Rather than guess over and over and over, let's go ahead and ask a computer to do our work for us. The computer is now guessing different nonce values randomly until it happens to guess 22294, which you see produces a hash that begins with four leading zeros. Because this hash is the output of input to a hash function consisting not only of the transaction data, but also of the nonce, changing either one will result in a new hash output which does not match the difficulty. If I change 22294 to 22295, you'll see I get a hash output which no longer meets the difficulty criteria. However, if I change any of my transaction data, I'm also altering the input to the hash function and thus generating an output which is completely different from the desired outcome. In this way, nodes or miners on a network can validate they have the same transaction data. If we all start randomly guessing nonce values for this set of data, and my node guesses 22294 first, all it has to do is simply share this nonce value with every other node on the network. Each node can then try this value, 22294, on their copy of the transaction data. If any of the data has been altered or changed in any way, no matter how insignificant, or the node in question simply did not record the data correctly, this nonce value will not work for them. For example, if we change 4.2 Bitcoin to 4.9 Bitcoin, you'll see that the proposed nonce does not work. In this way, all nodes can come to consensus or agreement on what the right set of transaction data should be. When a node thinks it's guessed the right nonce, it simply shares that value with the rest of the network. If the majority of the network, 51% or more, agree with this nonce because they have the same transaction data on their copy of the block, then the miner who guessed this number first will be rewarded and the network will come to consensus or agree that this is the correct version of the block data. Any nodes which have different data for the current block will then discard the copy of the current block they have and replace it with a copy that the rest of the network has agreed upon. This method is used to create blocks of data chained together. So let's say that we have some transaction data here on the blockchain. We're going to go ahead and mine our first block. Now you'll notice what we've added in this demo is the hash of the previous block, which is something we store in the header of every block on the blockchain. Because this is a, the first block, I simply get a previous hash value of zero. Combining zero with the current transaction data on the block 
and the proposed nonce gives me a hash that meets the output difficulty. When it's time to validate the second block, the process repeats itself. I simply take the hash of the previous block, stored in the header of the current block, combine it with the transaction data in the current block, and try to guess the correct nonce. In this case, it's 12314. As discussed in our video on cryptographic hashing, changing any of the input data, no matter how slight, will result in an entirely different hash. So if I try and change 2.3 to 2.9, I no longer get an output which matches the current difficulty. This new output is also reflected in the header of the next subsequent block. If I have a series of blocks that have all been mined and linked together, then you can see that going and changing data on any block will break every subsequent block after it. So if I try and alter this record, David pays Charlie 2.3 Bitcoin, and I want to change it to 5.3 Bitcoin, I change the hash output of the current block. This is reflected in the current block, and also in the next block. Now, the nonce proposed for the next block does not work when combined with that block's transaction data and with the hash of the previous block. This means that if I want to alter data on the blockchain, not only do I need to remine the block that I changed the data on, I also need to remine every subsequent block in the blockchain. This is no trivial task when you consider that major blockchains such as Bitcoin and Ethereum contain millions of blocks, and this process must be repeated on tens of thousands of nodes worldwide in a very short amount of time. This ability to link together blocks in an immutable fashion and to cause attackers to have to undertake so much work repeated so many times is what gives blockchain its security and immutability. I hope you've learned a little bit more about proof-of-work consensus and how blocks on the blockchain are linked together through watching this video.